This conference will now be recorded. Welcome to DR TSPR show. This is Dr. Tangella Shiva Prasad Reddy alias Dr. TSPR. Namaste, Adab, hello, and a warm, warm welcome to my Guru Tulilu, Devi Subbarao Garu, and another important guest, a software engineer from Bengaluru. She is Annapurna Kamadji. A hearty welcome. Okay. May 10th, Karnataka is going to go to polls. And my guru's idea, how is that people ignore basic amenities? Let me say basic amenities now. <laughs> when, when, when we are talking about nature, climate, lakes, they are forgetting basic amenities means water to drink, oxygen to breathe fresh, fresh air to breathe oxygen from it. To take oxygen and breathe so that we survive. And if both of them get polluted, air and water. Or I say if the entire land where they are sourced, like lakes, small rivers, rivulets, nalas, if they are encroached, if they are ignored, if you ignore such encroachments, can you get potable water, drinking water? In the same breath, can we have that fresh air when you go on encroaching, destroying and disturbing the nature in the name of development? As I was traveling to Kerala via Bengaluru, last time when my guru asked me to take the photograph, I took the photographs. They were trying to slowly finish off the river or water bodies they were dumping. Now, this year when I passed through that, to my astos astonishment, huge commercial structures, roads destroying everything. So Bangalore, like Hyderabad, Mumbai, every other city in India, Kochi, is getting inundated, flooding, not roads, even the developments, the houses, offices alike. Why? Because water and elephant will never forget their way. Come whatever you do, that water will come there and elephant will go through that way only. So this important show, last show, we have exposed 23,000 crores over 12 years spent on a pipeline in Bengaluru, in and around Bengaluru, which has not produced even a drop of water. All political parties involved. Why they don't discuss? Elite people in Bengaluru, software engineers. So many big software industries and uh, big companies. Learned people. How come corruption is ignored? How come natural resources like water and air are getting polluted and those bodies are encroached? Still, no Bengalurian speaks not people from Karnataka speaks, not this becomes an election agenda even in 2023. That is why we are TSPR channels with the blessings of my guru. We are taking up this topic once again with another wonderful guest. Sir, kindly. Uh, welcome to Dr. <clears throat> Anapurna S. Kamathri. Thank you, sir. Thank you and, so much. Uh, yeah, Dr. Anapurna is a software engineer and uh, she has diversified interest associated with NGOs and involved in many activities. And she strongly believes in the people's participation in natural resources management. Really, it's sad to see Bangalore uh, Day by day, it is getting deteriorated. The best city in the country, actually, the best city in the country, which had all kinds of civic regulations. When I first time visited in 1970, I paid one rupee penalty for crossing the road when the red light was there in 1970. Today, no regulation. Nobody bothers about the red lights. That is the situation. But unfortunate uh, things are happening. 
Madam, I congratulate that, you know, the lake groups in Bangalore came out with a lake manifesto for the 20, you know, coming elections. So how do you see this? So, um, you know, working in this uh, field, uh, you know, as a citizen participation model for the eight years that we have adopted the lake, uh, I have realized that lake are very important community amenities because uh, like sir also was mentioning, they contribute to the water table in that community as well as they purify the air if there are enough trees in the lake. So from these two aspects where water and air is very important uh, for a livelihood of anybody. So from that angle, they become very important and uh, a leader or a politician who is going to be our leader tomorrow has to realize that it is very important and the community values it, you know, like a road. It has the same kind of a treatment like we treat roads, we treat other infrastructure, even lakes, forests or urban uh, landscape have to be preserved and we have to give equal importance to these natural resources and they have to become part of a manifesto. And, uh, you know, I would say that a lot of these politicians this time are very happy to take up these as manifesto agendas, which is a very nice positive change, I would say, because they also have realized that citizens value them a lot. Thank you. And uh, the issue is still, you see, most of the government officers and the politicians, they feel that lakes do not have any role in urban scenario. And yet to recognize, you know, it's a natural function, a primary and an effective important function that the lakes are flood regulating water infrastructures. From Belandur to Vartur, the water flows. Why this is neglected, particularly? So I think in Bangalore, as per my uh, understanding, you know, it has expanded without much of planning, you know, because suddenly there was this IT, BT kind of, uh, you know, development that happened and a lot of people came to Bangalore for jobs and suddenly we had to accommodate all of them. So infrastructure just like grew without much of planning. So that is where I think uh, without really understanding how nature works and how these waterways work, construction started coming up, you know. And this was, I'm speaking about a decade back when there was no much uh, realization. Now, over a period of time, because these infrastructures are giving way, like flooding is happening in uh, the most elitist apartments, there is a lot of uh, confusion everywhere. No? Like last year rains, I think all the IT uh, you know, uh, industries also were facing the flooding issues. Big apartments faced it. And that's when I think uh, people started questioning why this is happening in Bangalore. Till that time, I think people were like, nothing is going to go wrong and we are going to manage with our intelligence and technology. So always we think man is more powerful than nature. I mean, that's what I think we believe till last year when we saw that, oh, no, nature also can be more powerful. And when she makes up her mind, none of our intelligence or technology works with that. So I think that is the first point where realization has happened. Because today when I converse with people, people are wanting to support lake conservation, even the IT industries. And the only thing you have to tell is, do you remember the flooding that happened last year? And immediately they'll say, yeah, I want to support the lake conservation because we had a hell of a time during that flooding. So I think that realization happened a little late, that developmented versus nature conservation. Most of us thought that we can do without nature, like we could destruct her and still get away and still live a good life, which I think she showed us through the pandemic as well as through the last year of flooding. Uh, the other very important issue is, you know, even we come out with a lot of manifestos hmm. and NGOs across the country are coming out with several green manifestos before the elections and trying to align with some political parties or the other. But the important issue is, uh, how do we ensure the implementation of this manifesto? 
So uh, we need you know, to we... have some. Yeah, we yeah. need to have some kind of a mechanism for that, even among the civil groups to monitor it. That what I feel, you know. Right. I agree with you, sir. There, because uh, most of the time we think that uh, election is the time to really pour out our, uh, you know, needs. But it's actually grievances. post elections, yeah, grievances or whatever is our dreams or whatever to share, so that our leader is going to fulfill it. But I think it's post elections. Once you have your leader, is when the role of a citizen begins. You need to start working with your leaders, whether it's an MLA, MP, corporator, whoever it may be. You need to work with them, you know, irrespective of the party. Because once the leader is elected, he's your leader. Whether you like the party or not, he's your leader. So you need to work with that leader and make sure that they are part of all the things that is important to you as a citizen. So, you know, like in our eight years of work, we work with our MLA, we work with our corporator. So we make sure that they're involved and we are expressing our uh, feelings with them so that, you know, they can work with us and help us rather than complaining behind their back. It doesn't serve any purpose. So go meet them and tell them, this is what I'm expecting. And I know you're going to fulfill it because you're my leader, right? So that really helps. And I think that the, you know, from the day the elections happen and the results are announced, the work starts then. The citizens have to then continuously work with their leader to get what they want for their communities and to enjoy their rights also. This is my feeling and it has worked wonderfully for us in the past eight years in terms of the lake. We've got support from all of our political leaders and we have never had any conflicts or we never had any issues with the stakeholder partnership. We had one side governance, we had one side of our elected representatives and one side citizens and all other stakeholders who were part of the lake and all of us have beautifully managed to work as one team. And you know that lake is what you see today and it has been identified nationally also as a model lake because of this uh, collaborative effort of all the organizations involved. So, but the citizens has to be the nodal point and make sure that he gets what he wants. That is what I would say. So democracy is not only voting, democracy is making sure your leader is again, continuing it for the next four years till you get to vote again. Yeah, that's true. You know, what you said is correct. But uh, across the country, particularly, you know, in my own state also, uh, political parties uh, during the elections, you know, they give a lot of promises that we, we fulfill these are our heritage and all. But once they come into the power, the distance between the citizen and the elected representatives, it's widening a lot. So that is one aspect that Bangalore, I think, you know, uh, as you said, you are trying to narrow it down. That is good. But at the same time, my experience in Bangalore is your bureaucrats are also not that straightforward and sincere guys. I work with your bureaucrats, BDA and uh, BBMP. And uh, you see, they talk a lot, but you know, while coming, delivering this goods, again, you know, things are not moving because it is the triangular, healthy triangular working relation between the citizen, bureaucrat, and the elected representative. Because that's what I feel. <laughs> I don't know your experience. Maybe in your area, all the three are good. <laughs> uh, yes, I mean, uh... I would, uh, I would, I take pride in sharing that our area has a very good combination of all three. So for Jakur Lake, area, everything madam? has worked our way. Can you mention you the know? area and the lake also? This Can is Jakur Lake in Bangalore. Sir? It's a Jakur Lake in Bangalore. It's in north part of Bangalore. So here, uh, you know, our uh, MLA and our corporator, everybody has been supportive for the past decade that we've been working with the lake as citizens. They're pro-citizens also. They really like citizens coming and working with them. And they are easily accessible to the citizens to discuss and, uh, you know, bring thoughts together. So we never had any challenges with elected representatives. And in the same line, we have been very fortunate to have the best of uh, the officials. Because uh, when it comes to a lake, since we still don't have an integrated 
uh, unit which is taking care of all affairs of the lake we still work with multiple departments so we work close to 17 to 18 departments because every small component belongs to a different department uh, we have somehow uh, been able to develop a good working relationship with all these departments where almost all our problem gets resolved or it gets addressed time delays i would say is uh, something to be uh, kind of uh, you know accepted because uh, in a government process there is uh, planning then budgeting and then the budget has to be allocated and then tendering happens and then the work happens so between our request and the work being done there will be a year or sometimes small delays and a year and a half or something like that for the project to get executed but they do listen to us they do work with us they do ask us for our inputs and we are allowed to monitor and work with the governing agencies and at least in bangalore i would say uh, lakes was the first department to open its door to citizen and solid waste management was the next one to open its door to citizen participation and every area has active citizen participation here and jakkur is not the only lake there are multiple lakes here which are working with citizens bureaucrats and are having a very a success story to share you know not like too much of grievances but yes ups and downs are part of any teamwork so there will be certain areas where we need to kind of work push follow up but still i would say we had one of the best uh, experiences in the decade where i almost you know tell everybody if you really want to do it this is the way to do it work with stakeholder partnership not like i will do something on my own that doesn't work we have to sustain the existing system through the elected representative and the governance that's what i believe in strongly and our community that is jalaposhan believes strongly and we have been able to achieve it in a decade we have the best of the you know stakeholder partnership model at jakur lake yeah that's good you know jakur lake is known and uh, vishnath and others are also involved in the jakur lake and jakur lake happens to be in the peri urban area Yes. Not in the concrete urban area. <laughs> that is one point. Yes. Plus point, what I see, what yes. I see, because all that experiments Jakur Lake has undergone and all, and also the easy in a peri-urban area, still you have the rural uh, psychological mindset yes. where people come forward to participate. But whereas uh, in areas like Subramanyapura, uh, Belandur, Vartur, you know, bringing out people out for discussions uh, is a tough task, you know, urban area participation. Uh, you know, that is the difference I see, you know, that's a de uh, demographic differences you have. Uh, but nevertheless, the most important thing is um, how do we take this uh, voting percentage is also very less in the urban areas across the country. So motivating the urban citizens uh, to go for voting and, you know, uh, ask for, you know, put pressure on the system that, you know, what they want, they want to get implemented. So that is another thing. Uh, so, I mean, uh, to say that, yes, Jakur is a peri-urban area, but the most of the population today is all migrant population. They all belong to IT and other sectors because we have Manyata Tech Park very close to our place. So I wouldn't say that it is now dominant by villagers or the local lights who used to live here it's a mix and match of local people as well as uh, you know all these uh, migrant uh, you know the cosmopolitan oh, crowd i would say yeah so in that way i wouldn't say that it but yeah it doesn't represent a pure urban setup like central bangalore it has a mix mm -hmm. and match but most of the people who come to the lake are equally the urban uh, people as well as the village local lights who have lived here all their life so i would say we're working with both and uh, yeah, I mean, like you said, it is uh, mindset wise, I think uh, not everybody belongs to Bengaluru. So some of them are in transition. They are here on work for a few years and they're moving. So that is, again, makes this voting difficult because most of them feel that it is a short term. You know, so they may not be having a connect of uh, Bengaluru as a city. Like you said, in 70s, things were happening because then Bangaloreans lived in Bangalore. Today, there are very few Bangaloreans and most of us belong to some other place and we call ourselves and we take pride in calling ourselves Bangalorean today. But actually, we are not 
from this geography like born and brought up here but yeah we relate to bengaluru and we feel we belong here today but that is the mix and match which is i think causing the voting uh, you know kind of some of the urban uh, literate people don't want to vote at all because they see you know they also have lost hope they're very pessimistic what change would it make you know so that is where we tell them that even your one single vote matters and your one single participation at the lake matters you know like sometimes they are very pessimistic even about the lake what will one person's contribution do to the lake we tell them it begins there and then one day we will have 100 then it becomes a thousand and that's how it grows but if none of you want to come then how would it even initiate so voting is also like that i think we have to keep on telling people how one vote can make a difference and how they can get all their grievances addressed if they are part of it and not sit back and not vote and complain a person who doesn't yeah. vote has, has no right to complain i would say because he's not done what? his fundamental duty then why complain you are a kamath yes, yes. kamath is a big family in karnataka <laughs> kerala they say kamath and kamath see movies also have come <laughs> hospitality industry hoteliers i think you are a native of karnataka doing wonderful job but only one part of bengaluru wherein we see as our guru garu stated first time i am i am it's a shocker for me because me and my guru garu we were searching where in can we get a public representative in union with uh, a good official and participatory enlightened citizens so that at least the issue become gets into prominence but we could not see none we could see but here i think a po po positive aspect but how is that it is not relating to entire bengaluru and karnataka and why it is not presenting as a good example to the entire southern india and india i don't know that beats my intelligence only my guru has to throw light on that and one thing i can tell you you know the uh, unfortunately our town planning and the smart city guidelines they never take the hydrology into the consideration Uh, because we adopted the town planning uh, from the Britishers uh, way back in 1940s you know, only, and uh, urban planning was to, urban planning and urban growth was totally neglected till 1990s. I can vouch for it. If so, suddenly. say mid of 1990s the growth started mm. by the time we had lot of international case studies on such issues unfortunately neither government of india nor uh, state governments reviewed them and made some changes modifications in the town planning that is the major problem for today's uh, thing and uh, jakur i tell you this peri urban case study can be an ideal case study for all the expanding cities in the country hello hello you are freeze madam yeah hello. madam I... madam You, you switch on both your video and audio it's a valid point which you are making sir it's a very valid point we have seen hyderabad urban development authority translated into hyderabad metro development authority doesn't work in sync with greater hyderabad municipal corporation which doesn't again function independently of the so called legislature or parliamentary politics and you have seen so many scams now enveloping hyderabad similarly bengaluru also we have seen so many of late enforcement directorate trying to unearth yeah it's, the a, yeah, it's of very it. yeah we have you have rightly pointed out dr shubhrasad garu it's very important that uh, yes we are back again so what i am saying what i am saying is jaku can be a good case study for the entire country i can say because most of the cities and the second cities you know second level cities are also expanding 
and this can give a direction to the urban planning how to go about and how to approach and make modifications and integrate hydrology into the newly developing peri urban zones mm. okay. uh, i you should give a serious thought to this and come out with a small booklet of you know the jakur case study which also highlight the people's participation part of it okay the problems of core urban areas are totally different and those groups can come out of you know what can be done and what can't be done hmm. but whereas you can your case study can certainly you know give a direction to the newly expanding urban areas that is my uh, suggestion please uh yes sir because uh, you know like uh, our one decade experience with i told you this uh, very good combination of working with elected representatives and government agencies and stakeholders and the citizens what uh, we have understood is you know like we as citizens uh, vision have a vision for our lake like what we want from our lake and then uh, the elected representatives help us drive it through a policy or drive it or send it Uh, send the message that i am supporting this cause and i believe in it and the bureaucrats you know support to do it because they only have to execute the projects at the end of the day and most of our projects have happened like that where uh, you know we also had the scientists the scientific social responsibility aspect where uh, you know like uh, mr vishwanath and lot of others like atri they are also part of the community so these are the scientific organization in our community and they are contributing with their science knowledge so everything is happening very scientifically at jakpur lake and i'm happy to share that all the government agencies are agreeing to follow those scientific steps so it's uh, you know like uh, there is always a want to do it the right way but sometimes there are these gaps which i think the citizen can fill in and connect the elected representative to the governance and the science behind it and all this can come together to make the best uh, possible uh, conservation effort uh, so i would say citizen participation is the important thing to happen and already we've started our documentation process uh, with bbmp uh, you know kind of supporting it uh, to make sure that everything from the beginning of jakur lake before restoration till now including citizen participation the scientific social responsibility various connects how to work on a way integrated system is being documented in various modes we're doing podcasts videos everything so that we said if we can do this and put it in public domain a lot of others can use and they don't have to reinvent the wheel but like you said everybody will have to tweak and make small changes to accommodate their lake because every lake is unique we cannot have one model working across lakes so they will have to take what works for them and they have to do a little research and tweak what doesn't work for them to work, make it work for them so this little bit of customization will be required yet the knowledge that we have collected from various experts will be available on public domain for everybody to use so that you know more lakes will be conserved and more community initiatives can be kick started not only in bangalore i would say across this country and that's what we are hoping that every last lake that we can save if we can do it now the next generation is safe and we would have left to back a legacy for our children yeah uh, it, it's uh, you know my humble suggestion is i see this experiment in the peri urban areas you should think of coming out with a manual hmm. restoration in the upcoming urban zones okay as you rightly pointed out you see we can come out with certain thumb rules hmm. because each lake has its own you know character hmm. but now nevertheless you know it needs customization hmm. okay but coming out with a manual can take you this experiment to urban planning levels because unless and until we influence the urban planners to more we see what happened in hyderabad i tell you peri urban areas were very good and we were very happy and today i am struggling i am struggling i am fighting i have gone to the ngt in a peri urban area suddenly they gave a permission to construct 30 storied buildings 
100 feet from the lake. So we need to, our efforts are not for a temporary gain, what I see. We need to come out with a manual and push it in the urban planning. That one aspect, and uh, let we can we can share, we can discuss across. Hmm. And another thing, what I feel is, Bangalore historically set a milestone on water management. Hmm. The chain link tanks, okay. Hmm. It's a legacy from Cholas, Krishna Devaraya, whatever it is. We are not talking of the, our heritage. We are not looking these lakes as our heritage. We are just looking these um, water bodies as our uh, some recreational hubs or some, you know, some kind in a different places. I argued and I suggested to several groups. Uh, in Bangalore, Madras, and in Hyderabad, that these are our heritage, part of our heritage. Mm. And it's our moral responsibility, collectively, mm. to preserve, restore these heritage and pass on to the next generation. Mm. We do not have even in our primary, secondary, and higher school education about our lakes. That's an unfortunate thing. Hmm. The other experiment, uh, I would, uh, other experiment which impressed me is the Putanahalli Lake. Usha Rajagopa. That was, so, these are my observations and what I am trying to connect uh, the lake warriors, I say, uh, in the South India and across country also. Mm -hmm. and recently with Jammu and Kashmir also, I am trying mm -hmm. to bring them. So this is my idea, madam. Nothing else. My So we need to go and I once again congratulate you that you people uh, could... Uh, uh, bring, come out with a good uh, lake manifesto and I wish you continue this spirit ensuring its implementation so we would like to hear more from you <laughs> thank you thank you so much sir and uh, thank you for giving me this opportunity uh, and surely we will work on both your inputs so documentation is already in progress so we will surely get back to you for some kind of guidance and uh, like you said for the schools we already started a lot of programs to integrate education with the uh, the lake so we call it nature's gurukul and from kindergarten to universities we provide opportunity for students to connect because we also felt there is a disconnect between academia and what is happening you know the community initiatives so this is also uh, you know kick started so we are you know trying our best to bring all generations into this and make sure that everybody feels the need to conserve lakes and then demands them as a right yeah uh, one small uh, tip you know experiment which uh, was initiated way back in 1992 so uh, in lake education so I used to take the students to the lake and give a statement that my lake has history, geography, chemistry, zoology, mathematics. And uh, each student, I you know, should select one subject, either agree or disagree. So integrating entire primary education through the lake, who constructed? What is the dimensions? Okay. What is the aquatic forms you see? So you have zoology, you have botany, you have history. So creating more innovativeness and inclusiveness, particularly in the education system, that is one aspect I would like to share at this uh, 
take this uh, you know uh, discussions uh, opportunity you can also think of this okay. yes, thank you so much thank dr shiv prasad yeah yeah it's wonderful to host as usual my guru always tries to light and light and light and me on in every show everything to learn from such great personalities who always cared nature in symbiosis with nature that rich biodiversity all the subjects will fall in place and one from kamath's family again in bengaluru reuniting the two takes from that zakur lake or whatever the lake conservation programs which they are doing is the integration of the elected representative with the officials stakeholders and all the citizens concerned and moving ahead and the best part is nature's gurukul integrating the entire society here it starts with our school education from kindergarten to the pg level making them to understand the necessity and importance of having lakes survive or conserve lake culture because it's just body contains 90% of water the same water which flows outside how is that we are not trying to save and conserve it i would say preserve it because we are not the last ones on this mother earth be selfish what is that you are going to preserve and pass it on to your own kith and kin in the next generation concrete jungles difficult to breathe how people have ran for cover though insensitively scared into submission stating, stating there is no oxygen in the air at least that you try to remember so that you will become responsible as article 51 g says responsible citizen because you are the constitution you have submitted constitution to yourselves right from prime minister chief minister they are all public servants then why you fear you should state that these things have to be preserved come whatever may let the growth happen but how taking care of all these nature's water bodies like lakes because we are just limiting ourselves to lakes otherwise what has happened to bangalore last year what is happening now to bengaluru every time what it happens to kerala and mumbai do not forget so this is the best way we can preserve conserve so that not just present our future will be much brighter and our kith and kin can live in a harmonious way or leading harmoniously of life in symbiosis with nature and that rich biodiversity which is most or quintessential for your own survival in the form of water and clean air and a very good atmosphere and before i say boy i'll just try to show one video because only one part of bengaluru north bengaluru is enlightened and the other part of bengaluru is still to likewise the entire karnataka it is going for elections every citizen whoever whichever party or whichever candidate approaches their house or them they should say these are my water bodies in this area can you protect them can you conserve them or else if they are encroached see that you remove those encroachments and again can you bring back such type of my lake culture only then i will vote vote you and that even if they want they can take bond because politicians are forgetting everything so we need not politicians who should be and whom we should be voting we need leaders who think and visualize beyond their petty politics or elections so for that reason i am trying to play this video with your permission to say bye for not just for karnataka elections for all the by elections and for the future elections to come enlightening citizens of their wonderful rights to lead a symbiosis life with nature in nature I'm just sharing this video sir don't go away madam just uh, enjoy this video Don't ever believe that a politician is a leader. Don't ever believe that. Because the system that we have produces politicians. It doesn't produce leaders. 
And so you can have a politician who knows nothing about leadership and he's leading you. Politicians are concerned about the next election. That's all they're interested in. That's why they cannot be leaders. But leaders are different. Leaders are concerned about the next generation. I want you to compare those two thoughts the next time you have a politician come to your house wanting to vie for your vote. Just ask him, uh, what is your vision for my children? I will sit and listen for 20 minutes for you to tell me what it is. He will leave your house. <laughs> because he has no interest in your children's children. His concern is to stay in power. To keep the position. To win the next election. This is why they cannot lead. When you are going to have a conversation with a politician, you should actually try this as a test. You, by the way, as a citizen of a community, you have a right to be seen by the mayor. I hope you know that. If you voted for a mayor, the mayor works for you. Therefore, you have a right to see him. You can make an appointment to see any public officer you voted for. Did you know that? That's your legal right. If he don't want to see you, you can take him to court. That's democracy. So I want you to make an appointment to go and see your mayor or go and see your governor and just sit and say, I want 30 minutes with you, sir. And ask him about that list right there. Uh, sir, what is your purpose for being in leadership in this city? What is your purpose? The first question will make him very nervous. Second question, what is your, what is your passion? for our community. He'll be wondering what you're talking about. What are you talking about? I just want to build roads and bridges and, and provide jobs. No, 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 no. What is your passion? And this is why we need to question the leaders we have. And so I have a little thought here. I call it politics versus leadership. Let's talk about it for a second. Number one, politicians focus on programs, not vision. Number two, politicians' priority is securing the next election, not securing the next generation. Their focus is different. Number three, politicians are preoccupied with promises, not purpose. What we need is statesmen, stateswomen. We don't need more politicians. A statesman is an interesting human. A statesman, think of the next generation. So wonderful to host you again. Uh, this is a great opportunity uh, wherein I was just trying to. Uh, <laughs> yeah. So this is what I just wanted to share before I say bye. Uh, are you able to? You are not visible. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm trying to. Yeah. So this is what I wanted to end with. A visionary, not a politician, a statesman who can lead you to a comfortable life along with your natural resources. And DRTSPR channels, citizen DRTSPR channels and environment people, DRTSPR channels have been leading with wonderful guests like my guru, Subbarao Garu and Professor Pushottam Reddy Garu and wonderful guests like Annapurna Kamath, another big family from Karnataka who is a soft engineer and trying to conserve the lakes. Wonderful to host you all. And I hope this message is loudly and clearly taken to every household in Karnataka to understand that they would vote for a leader with a visionary so that their present and future is safe and secure. Thank you very much, sir. Thank you very much. Good night. Take care. Bye, sir.